gentlemen you are welcome into another episode so today we are going to uh, discuss on uh, glycolysis so glycolysis is uh, a process whereby a glucose is uh, broken down into uh, into a pyruvate it's a series of steps in which glucose is broken down into uh, a pyruvate with the production of the, the energy and the pyruvate can be converted into acetyl coa which goes into tea cycle and then more energy is then uh, produced so um catabolism now in this slide we are going to uh, look at how uh, this catabolism is now <clears throat> protein parts carbohydrates are all broken down into their smaller units protein is broken down into amino acids parts is broken down into fatty acids and then carbohydrates broken down into a glucose now this amino acid undergoes into uh, bro uh, another metabolism now this uh, protein me uh, metabolism produces this acetyl coa while this fatty acid catabolism oxidation produces acetyl coa and glycolysis produces this uh, also acetyl coa so the acetyl coa is a central uh, metabolite in the uh, central uh, play a central role in the uh, this uh, metabolism now this uh, Acetyl CoA can go into the TCA cycle and then subsequently can also go into the oxidative phosphorylation while it can also be used for fatty acid synthesis and then energy can be produced from this TCA uh, cycle. So, the next slide is uh, the central role of a glucose. Glucose can be, uh, uh, can be stored into glycogen, starch, sucrose can be converted into these substances. Then we also have synthesis of our structural polymers. Here we have this extracellular matrix and several uh, which are made up of this polysaccharides. And then we also have this uh, oxidation via the pentophosphate pathway in which our ribospike phosphate is being produced. And then we have oxidation via uh, glycolysis in which a pyruvate is then generated. So the next slide is overview of the glucose. So as we can be able to see that this glucose, uh, we have two phases. We have the energy investment in which we use make use of ATP and then we also have the second phase which is uh, uh, energy uh, pay off phase in which energy is being also produced so uh, two phases of the glucose uh, phases we have the well, phase two of glycolysis essentially where this energy is being generated so uh, then we have the two phases here we have the phase one in which the ATP is consumed. Here we have glucose to gl uh, glucose six phosphate in which ATP is being consumed, and then we also have the next step, which is uh, fructose six phosphate to fructose one six bisphosphate in which another ATP is consumed. So in this case, we refer to this as a uh, energy investment phase of the phase one, and then we have the energy payoff phase in which ATP is being generated at this step and then we have another step here we have another step in which ATP is being uh, generated so the next step is preparatory phase now this preparatory phase also known as the phase one uh, like we said earlier uh, it consumes ATP that is glucose plus uh, ATP giving glucose 6 phosphate and then we have from glucose 6 phosphate to fructose one, uh, 6 phosphate and then we have ATP another ATP is consumed to produce Proctose 1, 6 bisphosphate, then subsequently give glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate plus dihydroxyacetone uh, phosphate. So, this is the structure of the glucose. This is the structure of uh, glucose 6 phosphate, and then and this is a structure of uh, proctose 1, 6 bisphosphate. Uh, and then the next uh, slide we have uh, th this is the first reaction in which uh, a glucose is phosphorylated at position 6 to produce glucose 6 phosphate and this reaction is highly hexagonic reaction uh, as you can see the delta g standard is minus 16.7 kJ per mole so uh, the next step is uh, reaction 1 which is a, a phosphorylation reaction uh, is the same as the previous slide that we just showed uh, it's just ATP is, uh, is uh, the, this glucose 6 Glucose is phosphorylated at position 6 to produce glucose 6 phosphate. So the next step 
is this hexokinase by by cis glucokinase now this uh, the post reaction is catalyzed by hexokinase now normally in the liver cells we have what we call glucokinase glucokinase is much more active in the liver cells while hexokinase is mostly active in the uh, other 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 organs or let me just say cells now we have tissue specific enzyme which are, are like i said earlier the hexokinase is acting on other cells other than that of the liver while in the liver we refer to it as the glucokinase and as you can see this is the relative enzyme activity hexokinase one is very high and here we have hexokinase four here that is and then the glucose concentration so reaction two is isomerization where from glucose 6 phosphate uh, we isomerize to fructose 6 phosphate which is like isomers here so we have uh, magnesium ion which is present and then the enzyme is phosphoxoisomerase and then del G is uh, positive which is an endagonic reaction which is uh, 1.7 kJ per mole so and then the this is the second reaction as I said earlier and then um, then this is also the second reaction which is a uh, isomerization reaction. so this is reaction 3 phosphorylation so um, we look at uh, proctose 1 6 phosphate is is phosphorylated by the addition of ATP in the presence of magnesium ion by the presence of this phosphoproctokinase 1 to produce uh, proctose 1 6 bis phosphate now this is the OH group where the phosphorylation actually took place and the delta G is a uh, highly hexagonic which is a uh, I know 14.2 kilojoule uh, per mole so, and then this is also the uh, phosphorylation reaction which is a uh, reaction 3 as we showed in the previous slide then this is a uh, reaction 4 which is a uh, cleavage now then proctose 1,6 bisphosphate is clipped by the action of aldolase to produce the hydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 uh, phosphate now the g of the reaction is 23.8 kilojoule per mole and then we this is also the uh, reaction 4 as we showed earlier this is reaction 5 isomerization uh, where we have the, the hydroxyacetone phosphate can be isomerizes into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate by triose phosphate isomerase and the G standard is 7.5 kilojoule per mole and this is also a reaction 5 as we have shown earlier it is just a isomerization reaction and then uh, this is also the the the, 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 the what this is also the isomerization but uh, here we are just keeping track of this particular carbon atom as you can be able to see this pitch uh, is representing the hydroxyacetone phosphate cleavage while this blue is representing the, the hydroxyglyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and all of these are cleaved by triose phosphate isomerase so the next um, as you can be able to see this is the second phase whereby we refer to it as a pay up pace where where ATP is being generated so we have from these two uh, two compounds glycerol dietary phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate then dihydroxyacetone phosphate is being converted into glycerol dietary phosphate and then subsequently uh, you know NADP inorganic phosphate enter and then we have another high energy compound which is NADH is being produced uh, and then we uh, which can go into the uh, oxidative phosphorylation and then we have one three bis uh, phosphoglycerate now two ADP enter and then we have uh, two molecules of ATP going out so this is uh, a fair up phase where energy is being produced and then we have these three phosphoglycerate and then is being converted into two phosphoglycerate then from two phosphoglycerate is converted into phosphoenopyruvate where we have another two ADP enter and two ATP uh, now comes out so at the end we produce this 
uh, pyruvate. So this is the structure of the compounds we just des described here. And this is the payoff uh, phase where we have the energies generated. So the next thing is reaction six. Now in this reaction six, we are going to look at how this have been also isomerized glycerol dietary phosphate, then plus inorganic phosphate in the presence of NAD plus to produce NADPH by the action of glycerol dietary phosphate dehydrogenase to produce 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate. And the daily standard is 6.3 kJ per mole. And then this is also uh, the same as the previous slide, but is uh, showing this uh, open chain where this NADPH, uh, you know, is being involved in the reaction. So, and then the reaction seven. Now the substrate level phosphorylation, whereby the phosphorylation now took place. So we have one uh, one three bisphosphoglycerate, and then plus ADP. So here we have three phosphoglycerate plus ATP, where we produce this our energy, and the G standard is minus 18.5 kJ per mole. Then we have reaction eight, which is a shift of phosphoryl group, where we have three phosphoglycerate. Then we have this is a magnesium ion. Then we have phosphoglycerate mutase as the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction to produce two phosphoglycerate. So as you can be able to see, this is a mutation. This is a mutation reaction where this phosphate in this group is being shifted to this particular position. So the next thing we are going to do is this is also a reaction in uh, 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 this is also reaction in, in reaction eight, which uh, we have the shift of the phosphoryl group. Then the next uh, is this one where we have these are uh, three uh, phosphoglycerate then this three phosphoglycerate as you can be able to see that the phosphate is attached to this CH2O while here now this one we have two three this phosphoglycerate so we have another phosphorylation now taking place from this uh, phosphoglycerate glycerate mutase. This enzyme is carrying the phosphate group and is transferring the ATP to this particular position. So, and then from this 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate, we have, uh, we have uh, producing 2-phosphoglycerate, which means one uh, phosphate group is now released. So, then the reaction 9, as we can see, we have the 2-phosphoglycerate to uh, phosphoenyl pyruvate, which is carried out by an enzyme called enolase. Now, the delta standard of this is uh, 7.5 kJ per mole. And then we also have this uh, reaction 10, which is at a substrate level phosphorylation. So we have phosphoenyl pyruvate, then plus this ADP, then we have pyruvate plus ATP produces uh, one. Uh, sorry, two mole of uh, ATP. So we have the least standard is minus 31.4 kilojoule uh, per mole. Then this is the summary of all the steps that is taking place. We have 10 more steps as we discussed in the previous uh, slides. We have glucose to glucose 6 phosphate, glucose 6 phosphate to proctose 6 phosphate, proctose 6 phosphate to proctose 1 6 plus phosphate, proctose 1 6 plus phosphate to the hydroxyacetone phosphate. To glycerol the high 3 phosphate, then from here to 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate, 3 phosphoglycerate, 2 phosphoglycerate, phosphoenyl pyruvate, then to a pyruvate. Then we have dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glycerol the 3 phosphate, 1 3 bisphosphate, 3 phosphoglycerate, 2 phosphoglycerate, phosphoenyl pyruvate, and then pyruvate. So here we have uh, two different steps going. At the same time, then the next thing is <coughs> we are going to look at uh, the feeder pathway. Now, if you look at this pathway, you will be able to see that this is a uh, tetrahalose. This is uh, this tetrahalose is being converted into uh, D glucose. Now, D glucose. Now, this D glucose can 
now goes into this uh, can be converted into glucose 6 phosphate and then can now proceed into fructose 6 phosphate then fructose 1 6 phosphate glycerol 3 phosphate and it can go down into this cycle so here you can see sucrose can be converted into this glucose 6 phosphate by sucrase and then we, it can also be converted into d fructose then d fructose can be converted into fructose 1 1 phosphate and then by the help of this enzyme fructose 1 1 phosphate aldolase can be clipped into glycerol dietary phosphate the hydroxyacetone which can enter the, the tca cycle and proceeded and then we have another d galactose can be converted into udp galactose then udp glucose can be converted into glucose 1 phosphate and can well enter into the tca cycle so as you can be able to see here d manos can be converted into minus 6 phosphate then can be converted into fructose 6 phosphate and can also enter into the tca cycle so this is referred to as the PDA pathway in which d glucose then this are uh, trihalose sucrose galactose manose all enters into this particular referred to as fermentation to ethanol in the yeast and under aerobic condition we are going to produce a lactate a fermentation to lactate in the vigorously contracting muscles in the erythrocyte in some other cells and in some microorganisms so here you have this aerobic condition produces carbon dioxide to acetyl coa and then this acetyl coa enters into the citric acid cycle to produce carbon dioxide water and then energy then animal plants many microbial cells under aerobic condition uses this uh, pathway so fermentation in animal we have a pyruvate is converted into a lactate now this lactate dehydrogenase is the enzyme that uses nadh to produce nad plus and then convert this pyruvate to l lactate and the dg of the the delta g standard is minus 25 kilojoule per mole so you have another fermentation in animals that is lactic acid from skeletal muscle is sent into the blood stream so this as you can be able to see this is the cup where we have this uh, lactate measurement shows sudden increase in lactate so uh, you can be able to see here we have this lactate and then here we have the power so as we have exercise increases we have the lactate is uh, generated increases so the next thing is the curry cycle which is a, a cycle between liver and muscles in which lactate we have the cycle between glucose and then the lactate now glucose in the liver is converted glucose is transported to the muscles and in this muscle due to the high exercise activity glucose undergo glycolysis to produce energy pyruvate then the pyruvate can be converted into lactate and then the lactate can be transported back into the liver and the lactate can be used to produce pyruvate and then the pyruvate can be converted into a glucose which is also used another by the muscle so as you can see this query cycle is involved the cycles between the exchange of a glucose a lactate between the liver and the muscles with these muscles producing energy while liver consuming uh, energy so now regulation of a glycolysis now a glycolysis can be regulated via this particular steps called the committed step now glycolysis start with the phosphorylation of the glucose in glucose 6 phosphate and therefore this is an important point of control so we have another important point of control where atp is consumed and then the next one we have another important step where atp is being generated so now we have the reversible step are uh, regulated include the hexokinase or glucokinase now this glucokinase is the first reaction where glucose is converted into glucose 6 phosphate which is an important point of control and then the next thing is we have phosphofructokinase 1 in which fructose 
6 phosphate is converted to fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate. And then the last step is the pyruvate kinase, which is uh, phosphorylated pyruvate is converted into a pyruvate. Now, the control of the hexokinase. Now, glucose plus ATP, then this gives us as, uh, glucose 6 phosphate plus ADP. So, here, as we can be able to see that this is a feedback inhibition, glucose 6 phosphate that is produced from glucose can now uh, can now feed back and block this activity of this particular enzyme hexokinase. So uh, as you can see, be able to see that this is a tissue specific en isoenzyme. So you have the hexokinase or glucokinase, and then you also have the hexokinase one, which are tissue uh, specific enzymes. So and the next thing is the control of uh, phosphoproctokinase one. So phosphoproctokinase one plus ATP. Phosphoproctose uh, 6 phosphate plus ATP, then this will give us proctose 1, 6 bisphosphate plus ADP. Now, ATP blocks this reaction. When the energy in the cell is very high, we have the reaction is blocked, while when AMP, ADP are very high, it signifies the low energy in the system, and then this reaction moves forward. So, citrate, once it is high, the reaction is blocked and proctose 2 6 bisphosphate once it is very high the reaction proceeds so and then the next one is we have control of this uh proctophosphate kinase as i said earlier uh, we say atp is an allosteric inhibitor that block the activity of this phosphoproctokinase one and then two binding site that is the substrate and allosteric site so the enzyme has two binding sites, the substrate binding site and allosteric binding site. So once ATP binds to the site, then the substrate could not be able to bind and then this ATP subsequently can stop this reaction. Thank you for listening.